This is your girl, Yannick Taylor, a.k.a. Priestess, hostess of Conversations with the Priestess. Here's a preview of what you may hear on Conversations with the Priestess. We weren't meant for monogamy, let's be honest. Like, we have needs, let's be real. And communicating that, what you want, what you don't want, what sets up... Now, this drink is brown, because I learned something. Since I'm older, I can't do brown liquor anymore. Also, I noticed since I started on hormone replacement there, HRT, in 2015, me and certain liquors don't mix, don't mix well. I don't know whether... And I recognize that a lot of men love to be dominated by women. And that's because men are seen as these leaders, as this big alpha male dominant thing, dominant being. And because they're put on this pedestal of being leaders, sometimes they want to be submissive. Back when I cosplayed a butch queen in South Carolina around 2011, I was on Craigslist. This is when Craigslist was bumping and before they had gotten rid of the personal section. I hope you enjoyed that preview. Join me on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. for Priestess After Dark. Full video versions of the podcast can be found on patreon.com forward slash CWT Priestess. And join me on Fridays at noon for our regular Friday post. Live, love, and be free. Smooches. Available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, anywhere you download and stream podcasts. All right, so this is a little bit different of an episode. It's a lot shorter because these stories are still developing. I've never really been into stories as they are developing, but this one has really struck my interest because of what might potentially be coming during the summer months. And this is the bodies that have been found in Lake Mead recently, which is located right outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. So there might be some updates, there might not be, just check in, we'll see what's going on, I'll keep you updated on all the happenings, and I will state my sources at the end of the episode. So first up, what's going on is there's a drought. Since the year 2000, the elevation of Lake Mead has dropped by almost 150 feet. This is according to the Southern Nevada Water Authority. This period right now, from 2000 to 2022, is the driest period in 1,200 years, and it is considered a mega drought. In August of last year, the federal government for the first time declared a water shortage at Lake Mead, and this triggered cuts in water supply for the entire region. Recent conditions have resulted in Southern Nevada Water Authority issuing mandatory summer water restrictions for this year. So let's talk about the first body. On Sunday, May 1st, Lake Mead, which is America's largest man-made reservoir, and it is about 40 miles east of Las Vegas and was formed by the construction of the Hoover Dam. There was a metal barrel found, and it was discovered at about 3 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, May 1st, by people walking along the shoreline of the lake, and this is right near Hemingway Harbor. They saw a corroded, rusted barrel embedded in mud, They decided to peek their heads inside and discovered a skeleton. A witness to the discovery told KLAS-TV in Las Vegas, We were docking our boat to go home and heard a woman scream. My husband walked over and found the body. His shirt and belt were the only thing we could see over his decomposing bones. These witnesses called the National Park Service, which responded and confirmed that the contents inside were in fact human remains. The National Park Service then called the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, which is currently investigating. Now the day after, on May 2nd, Lt. Ray Spencer of the police department said during a phone interview that... The reason this discovery happened was because of the drought. He said, It's really odd in the sense that had the lake never receded, we would never have discovered this body. 
Then he said the next day in a statement that investigators believe the victim died from a gunshot wound. And he declined to share details about the victim, which included the possible age or the sex of the victim. But based on clothing and footwear that the victim was found with, investigators believe the person was killed in the mid-1970s or early 1980s. And they base this on the fact that they discovered shoes the man was wearing were sold at Kmart and manufactured in the middle and late 1970s. Rangers with the National Park Service find one or two bodies at Lake Mead every year. So the whole finding the bodies wasn't the big deal. It was the circumstances of finding it in a barrel and the person is a straight up homicide victim. So they said, it's not uncommon to work a homicide out at the lake, which makes sense. But the drop in the lake's water level could result in other bodies being found at the lake. Lieutenant Spencer said it is possible the barrel was dumped in the lake from a boat. He said, the water level has dropped so much over the last 30 to 40 years that where the person was located, if a person were to drop the barrel in the water and it sinks, you are never going to find it unless the water level drops. The water level has dropped and made the barrel visible. The barrel did not move. It was not like the barrel washed up. Now, since the victim was killed in the 1980s, maybe late 70s, in the area near Las Vegas, where mafia-connected casinos dominated in this time frame, investigators are definitely not ruling out that the killing may have been mafia-related. Lieutenant Spencer said, We are going to look at that potential possibility. Investigators also plan to scan missing persons cases from the 1980s to search for clues. The investigation, though, could take years because the police are starting from square one, from what Lieutenant Spencer said. In the 1980s, they didn't have any DNA databases, so there's no DNA collection. If investigators are able to recover DNA samples from the remains, it will take extensive genealogy work to determine the person's identity. Experts at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, will help them identify the remains and determine the age of the barrel's metal and when it started eroding as well. Officials have warned that the drought would possibly bring more human remains to the lake's surface. After the first set of human remains were found on May 1st, Lieutenant Ray Spencer told KLAS-TV, I would say there is a very good chance as the water level drops that we are going to find additional human remains. And that brings us to the second body that was found six days later, on Saturday, May 6th. The National Park Service said rangers responded after a witness reported human skeletal remains at Colville Bay in the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. That was around 2 p.m. that day. Two sisters paddleboarding in the lake on Saturday spotted the bones, which they initially thought were the remains of a bighorn sheep. One of the witnesses said, For the longest time I was in disbelief, like I did not think that we actually found human remains. After they spotted the jawbone, they realized the remains were human, and that's when they contacted the park officials. The Clark County Medical Examiner was called in to determine the cause of death and to determine the identity, and the investigation, along with the first one, is still ongoing. Las Vegas police said they are not investigating the case as a homicide, though, which is pretty interesting right there. But over the next few months during this summer, they're going through a mega drought. That water level is really going to drop. And I'm thinking they're going to find more stuff. For the sources, we have the Associated Press, The Guardian, Las Vegas, Nevada, Fox 5, NPR, The New York Times, Las Vegas Review Journal, and KLAS-TV. So, like I said, this is a developing thing, so you will more than likely see updates coming as more news breaks on this. Because for some odd reason, I'm really interested in it. I'm going to try to keep you updated.
Like I said, short episode. This is still a developing story with not much information. So I hope you stay tuned to keep up to date. And until next time, I'll see you on the flip side. visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi said, it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer Radio Show on demand every day, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth.